Everyone, welcome back to another exciting Adobe live stream. I am here with Christy Campbell from Pink Pony Creative. I am beyond excited to be getting into it today. Um, wherever you're tuning in from, make sure that you come over to be.net slash Adobe Live. So if you're on YouTube, we won't be able to read your chat. So come over to be.net slash Adobe Live so we can read your chat and engage with you. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're tuning in from. If you're First time here, long time here. Thank you for coming. Make sure you type in chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We love seeing all of our international friends. Um, with that, Christy, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey guys, so thank you for having me here today. I'm so excited to be joining us live. So basically I'm Christy Campbell. I'm from New Zealand, all the way over in New Zealand. Um, I own a graphic and branding design studio in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Um, and yeah, I just create awesome gra graphics for everyone all over the world. Um, so I'll just show you guys a little bit of my stuff. Um, so this is just my website. So I've been designing for about um, like eight years now. Uh, I did a degree in graphic design and animation um, and I just do like a whole lot of mixture of things so I do everything from branding so I brand up really cool um, small businesses um, do some really cool illustration work and then I also um, do graphic design in general so even stuff like this where I created a really cool um, like gradient map portfolio for a photographer in America um, so just a whole range of stuff packaging design um, yeah, a bit of everything really. And you guys might know me from um, my Instagram, my TikTok. I'm sort of kind of well known for my artboard photography now. This is a bit of the stuff that I kind of put out there to the world and how I like um, show my brands off. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the way that people have started to know me, which is really cool. I love that. Your artboard photography is phenomenal and it's super inspiring to see. And it's just a great way of laying things out. Um, I, I know on your Thank website, you. you've got, it says, you started out essentially with a hundred day challenge back in 2019. Can you kind of unpack that? Yeah, for sure. So basically I started the challenge out. I was working for another uh, business and I was, it was just a one brand business. So I was getting a little bit, um, you know, I wasn't using my full creative juices. So I really wanted to be inspired and get more creative. So I did this hundred day design challenge. And so I posted every day, a new design for 100 days obviously um not thinking it would go anywhere and then i just used instagram as like a bit of a um you know tool to keep myself accountable and then i started getting some inquiries through instagram so i was like oh you know this is pretty cool this might go somewhere and then from there um i just decided maybe i should move it into a business and that was about a year and a half ago um a little bit over a year and a half ago and now I do it full time I have a staff member um and yeah so it's going really well loving every minute of it like I'm I feel so blessed that I get to work with just like really cool businesses from like your you know your sweet sheets and gelato businesses to beauty businesses really cool beauty packaging um a whole lot of a whole range of stuff so I feel very blessed that I get to do all that I love it. Uh, Fergie in chat says that OMG, love the name, Pink Pony Creative, love the branding. So, <laughs> Oh, thank you. I feel like this. people always ask me, where did the name come from? Because it is quite random. Um, and honestly, it's as simple. It comes down to the fact that I was a horse rider growing up and I loved horses and I also loved pink. So it kind of just stuck and I didn't think too much about it and it's worked out well. So <laughs> love it. So let's start talking about what we're going to be working on over the next two days. So today um, we're doing some editorial design and I really wanted to um, incorporate uh, my love for illustrations because I do use a lot of those throughout all my work, um, whether they're hand-drawn style stuff or vector illustrations that I draw on the computer. Um, so we're going to use those and create a really cool Hawaiian brochure, but kind of 
a more modern edge um, style brochure that's a little bit more fun and funky than your usual travel thing that you'll see when you kind of go to a country and want to see your top spot. So that's okay. kind of what we're doing today. Yeah. And we're going to use a bit of InDesign, um, some Illustrator and also some Photoshop. Perfect. Love the multi application approach. It's perfect. There's a few there. Yeah, that's for sure. So we're going to use them all. <laughs> all right, cool. So basically, um, I'll just jump right into it. So to start with, um, I've created this bit of like a bit of a skeleton, um, just a bit of a plan to move ahead with. Um, we've got our uh, plan laid out um, it's going to be about 16 page booklet um, i've got content here as well and i know some of you guys would have been given a link to some assets and within that link you'll find you will find this copy so if you want to join along i'd love for you to um, give it a go and also play around with your own stuff make your own style things like that um, but we've got all of our copy here so we're going to use um, some just some headings and also some placeholder text to kind of you know build out the copy a bit and um, make it look like it's a, a brochure because obviously this is just a passion project uh, this is not a real project um, just a bit, a bit of fun so to start with yeah I created the skeleton just a bit of a plan we're going to have our a title page, a front page, going to be really graphic, beautiful. And then we're going to head into like contents and that's going to be some kind of really big imagery. Um, and then go into things like, you know, your snorkeling, your surfing, your view. And this is where all the pages and all the content comes into play. Um, so yeah, just created this set template to give us a bit of an idea about where to head and where to go to from here. I love this. Right. Wireframing things out is so powerful um, and mm. so, so helpful when you're planning these types of things out. When you're wireframing this, how did you approach it? Did you already have content kind of in mind? Did you already kind of know, did you start with like wireframing it out first or did you le leverage the, the content or copy first? So I kind of, what I actually started to do first is I went on to um, Bee Hunts and I, oh, not my not microphone there, and I planned out a bit of a mood board, um, just of some kind of like stuff that I'd really like to, I was really inspired by, you know, this kind of stuff I love, just like that sort of edgy, a little bit messy, but still really tidy in its nature. Um, loved all this kind of stuff as well, where we can see those illustrations coming in. So I got all this sort of stuff, planned out a bit of a mood that I wanted to create. And then from here, I went ahead, did a bit of research and planned out my copy um, and kind of what I wanted to bring across um, and the kind of stuff that I wanted to have within this brochure. I love um, that. Yeah, yeah. So, and then from there, that's when I went into, um, you know, creating the layout, how it's going to work. Um, and, you know, as a designer, I feel like things come so naturally as well. Like it's really hard to explain creativity. I think sometimes that people sort of ask your process and things like that, but it's, it's sort of a gut feel and a gut feel like this is the way I want to head. Um, and I feel like most of the time, my first gut feel is the one that I'm always going to go with. Uh, so yeah, and then I just planned it out. Um, and then that's when I went on to start to create my hand-drawn illustration. So I've actually got them here, the, the pictures. <laughs> Um, so I actually drew these by hand, if you guys can see these. Um, and then what I did from there, I scanned them in my phone and then uploaded them into my computer. Um, so they basically just come through as a scanned PDF like this. And so I thought I'd show you guys today how I then converted these into vectors because it's quite an interesting process. So um, I'll just jump straight into it. So we'll pull this up into Photoshop. Um, and then from here, we're just using Photoshop to basically enhance the black lines. So we're going to go ahead and, um, you know, enhance the brightness and the contrast of it to try and get rid of the uh, sort of dusty speck and bring up the black a bit, just a tad, just so that we can see it a little bit more. We'll even try and do some auto toning and contrasting. See how that goes. It didn't bring it actually up too much. Um, you can do an adjustment layer for black and white, and then you'll have a little bit more granular control as well. Yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, I actually weirdly don't use adjustment layers that much. I probably should. <laughs> um, and designers, like, the process are always all so different. Um, for sure. So I feel like it can be so uh, different between them all. So we'll just save that. That'll probably be good enough for where we're going to go to here. 
open up Illustrator. We'll just open up a um, just like an A4 page. So from here, this is when we're going to um, move our vectors or try and create our vectors from our scan document. So we'll just open this into Illustrator. Dopegasm says, um, I'm so excited to learn as I design my first commissioned project. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. Oh, the first commission. That's a, a big step, but always such a good step. Absolutely agree. That's when you're, when you're going into the world of freelancing. <laughs> 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 All right. So this is quite interesting because I start to expand and like image trace my file, but obviously it's not very detailed here. Um, so that's when I move into the image trace uh, options, the tools, and then um, just going high color here will hopefully really increase that black and also get rid of the white a bit more. And it's really nice because you can kind of adjust it um, quite easily here as well. Um, sometimes it does take its sweet time. <laughs> it's fine. Chat is ogling and loving your illustrations, so. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. cool. Steve Glad says, to hear. Nice sketches. Oh, Just thank like you. That, like, as much enthusiasm as possible. <laughs> thank you very much. I feel like I really wanted to go for that like edgy, um, really sketched style. So that's why they, they are quite messy. Um, but I think, honestly, I think if I try and do it too perfect, it doesn't even look that good anyway. Um, I love Illustrator when it takes its time. <laughs> I think it's a perfect file. Exactly. Yeah, it's the one. <laughs> All right, hopefully it'll hurry up. I've actually also sorted these illustrations out um, in another file so that we can easily just go and grab them um, after this, but I thought I'd love to show the process. So from here, I'm just going to change it to black and white as well. Um, just to really bring that color, that black out. Um, all right, so hopefully this works a bit faster. There we go. And you can kind of change the colors here to try and bring the black out even more. Um, and then basically from here, once it's done rendering, oh, there you go, that's looking pretty good. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's when you can expand it and actually make all your, um, all your illustrations into vectors, really. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then you can go in and like delete all the white, things like that. And then from here, it's actually one full vector. Um, so you can make it any size you want, any color, um, and really play around with it. Um, so what I've also done today in the uh, assets folder that you guys might have seen, um, you'll see a file called illustrations. And this is where I've actually put all the illustrations in there. So I want you guys to take this and have a, like have fun with it. Um, you can actually, they're all uh, separate files now. Um, so you can take these and blow them up, make them a different color, play around with them a bit, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is huge. Love yeah. those illustrations, they're so cute. Oh, thank you. The little turtle. I love him. <laughs> He's probably my favorite. Cool. So now that we've done like our illustrations, we've got them all prepared. They're all individual files. Um, this is when we can start really going into the document and giving it a go. So if we open up in, in design here, I'm going to make the, you know, like when I'm thinking about print as well and things that are in your hands, it's really nice to also uh, not make them potentially like an, your standard A4. So I love to just to make them feel a little bit more special, a little bit different. Um, so we're going to make it 210 by 280 here today. Um, and we're going to do oh, 16 pages, I think. That's the one. Perfect. And margins, I always just throw on, say, like 14 to start with, 14, 10 or something. And I can adjust them when I go back into the into the document. All right. So we are good to go. Cool. So we're going to get into our document um, and move into the just laying it out. So we're going to think about the grids here. So from our... Um, our little skeleton here, our wireframes. I want to have like at least three grid blocks so we can work with it. I think it's a really nice standard template to kind of start with. Um, so we'll go back into Illustrator, move into the parents, not the masters, but the parent. <laughs> All right. And then go we'll create guides. I know you said that this is a good standard to start with. Do you yeah. typically have a favorite kind of column grid structure that you like to place across all of your editorial work? 
It's definitely between, I always go between three and six. Um, Well, kind of either between three and six, but I like six because you can kind of work with, say, you know, if I'll just open this up, um, it's looking pretty good. You know, if you're thinking about a box here, you can actually make like a grid out of these. So you could have three columns here. So this could be like your text, your body text. You have your three columns. You could also make it, um, you know, one and two, you know, that sort of style. Um, so there's lots of different ways to work around it. You could even just go the one full column, which is, you know, across the whole grid. Ooh. Say there. Um, so lots to play around with. And I think that's why I really like the six column grid here um, in particular. I agree. And I love I, when you have the system that you can kind of break or play with. I think breaking yeah. guides and grids can be super helpful to reinforce your visual. For language. sure. And I'll even actually chuck in um, a just a couple of grids. Um, we might go six again here too. Yeah, nice. I feel like this is such an important step as well that a lot of designers tend to forget. Um, and I know a lot of designers, um, especially when you're starting out, a lot of them tend to um, start or just sort of design in this view where you're not um, looking at your grid, looking at your margins. I think it's so important to remember to keep switching between the both um, to get those views coming up. I agree. There's a lot of a lot of eager beavers and I am one of them sometimes where I just <laughs> want to just start jumping in and designing, but then I really struggle at the end because I didn't set up all the rules and guides and, and yeah. layers and structures correctly. So a little bit of work 100%. up front saves you so much trouble at the end. Oh, that's the one. Exactly. All right, so let's get into, so when I start out like a document like this and I've got my content, I basically, you know, if this is the front page content, I'll just copy all that across and just literally pop it right beside it. I'll kind of blow it up a little bit. Just so I've got it all there. I'm going to work with it right beside me. Cool. And then what I've done today, I've actually also um, played around with some fonts that I was thinking about using. Um, so I've just opened these up in Illustrator just because I found it quite easy just to showcase them. Um, so you've got your subheading, your heading font and your body. And I just wanted to play around with a few ideas because I know that font choosing can be so tedious. And because sometimes you can honestly look for fonts for like hours and you're just like, where did that time go? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. how, did, how did you come about kind of selecting these typefaces? Oh, it's such a tricky one. Like, I definitely go through my whole um, font library. So say if I'm making a, I'm trying to find a heading, a subheading font, I'll literally kind of go through, see what feels right. You know, I'm wanting this really edgy style booklet that's a little bit different. So I don't want sort of your classic, just standard, um, you know, Helvetica font. <laughs> so I wanted something like really bold and striking for the heading. Um, and there's always like those few fonts that you have in like your head. You kind of select 20 that you might use um, for like bold, edgy stuff. Uh, but most of the time I get these from say like Adobe, you know, Adobe fonts, um, Google fonts is really great and other places um, to purchase them from. So um, I really liked this one though. I loved how like just sort of bold, strong um, it was. Um, and then also combining it with this really cool style font. I think it's Roboto, Roberta. I don't even know how to say half of them. Yeah. Roboto it's, it's a <laughs> yeah. great one. There you go. I feel like my Kiwi accent will butcher everything, <laughs> <laughs> all, all the fonts. Um, and I also like really liked this kind of style because it's a little bit like rustic um it's got the textures in there which would match which would then match my illustrations which would be quite nice um so just trying to play around i also liked this because it felt quite um almost like a holiday <laughs> um so i wanted to play around with a few things but i actually thinking about it now i really like this style so i think i'm gonna go ahead using this kind of um typography structure for the fonts so let's kind of just start to map out the fonts a bit here. So we'll take Slice of Paradise, pop that in there. I wanna, um, I wonder if many people are following along or if you guys are all just watching. I'd yeah, chat, let us know, exactly. Let, let us, us know. know. <laughs> yeah. Steve says that I need to push uh, Comic Papyrus. So oh, this is my, no. have you oh, ever dear. seen it? It's delightful. <laughs> it's is the it perfect the, mashup the of Comic Sans and Papyrus. Uh, it sounds yeah. like a, a visual nightmare. 
<laughs> no, this is what dreams are made of. This is perfect for headings, <laughs> body copy, <laughs> subheads, for everything. There's no oh, occasion God. comic papyrus isn't perfect for. <laughs> comic papyrus. I'm going to have to look that up one day. Definitely. We'll have to give that a go. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, but chat, definitely... let us know if you are watching or playing along with us, following along, doing it at home. Let us know. Yeah, would love to know. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and also take this one, the Roberto. How do you say it? Roberto? Roboto. 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 Mm, there we go. <laughs> dance move. Okay. Yeah, it does sound like a dance move actually. I love this font, especially when it's in capitals. Mm -hmm. I just it's so cool. It's such a like edgy modern sort of style font. I keep saying edgy and modern, but this is what we're all about here today. Edgy yeah. and modern. <laughs> I, so I gonna... particularly love monospace typefaces just for mm. subheads and things like, or even like paragraph copy as well. Just yeah. has a really nice feeling. It does have a nice feeling actually. It's a really nice font. So I kind of just start to lay out all the text a little bit. Um, I'll maybe even take this bit, leave your, leave your heart in Hawaii. So this is where I'm actually going to start to create um, a couple of paragraph styles Ooh. so so that we can then use them across the document um, it really depends like for me when I'm using character styles and when I'm not like if I'm just creating a poster I often won't use them but if I'm doing like a longer document where I'm going to be using lots of text I definitely will get in there and create these styles so this is going to be our uh, subheading which will make subheading. Are you a designer that uses a lot of character styles? I and am sort of one of the people that if I'm working with somebody, they get mad at me because I've broken all my character styles. So <laughs> <laughs> I know the best practices. I just sometimes don't do them. Don't, yeah, definitely. But I feel like such that's a good... all of us designers. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Um, lots of people in chat are watching intently. Uh, Charlotte's saying that uh, they're working on a logo for the first client. So that's super exciting. Oh, cool. Yeah. I love that. Oh, I was going to save and, the document. And Voodoo Val and Umicron really appreciate you not giving way to my comic papyrus desires. So, oh, I should have thrown it in there. <laughs> yeah. There's always tomorrow. Just for fun. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow <laughs> I'll bring it up. And it can uh, make an appearance in the book. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. I liked this cute little, I am free. Just sort of the book that's <laughs> going to be free for anyone who wants to take it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right. And I reckon we'll just throw in this last little, this last little guy here. So for the, what did I go for for the body text? So for the body, I went with crimson. I love to like, mix up your hierarchy, mix up your fonts between like your body and subheading and heading um, typography as well. I think it just looks so stylish and it just gives a really clear, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this kind of, these fonts all work together? If you're thinking about this as a body font, so this is where all your full, um, you know, more text is gonna be. Are we yeah, liking the style? <laughs> Did I spell sport snorkeling wrong? I did. There we go. All right. Okay, so we've got a few bits and pieces here. Um, I'll bring in a couple of other bits soon. Um, make sure I'll just do one more, this little guy. Cool. And we'll definitely be playing around with the sizing of all these, because obviously this is not quite right. <laughs> um, so from here, what I thought we could do as well, because I really want to make this a little bit edgier, fun, um, styled, I thought we could bring in not only your the illustrations we've done as vectors, but also um, even for like the heading page, the front page, make it like a really cool gradient map photo. Mm -hmm. um, and this is such an easy thing to do to add that style, add, add that kind of edge to it. So let's go ahead. And within our... Um, the link you guys would have got. I've got a lot of imagery. So we've got some general images that I'm going to use for the cover. So I've got a few, I like I've got a few here um, that we can kind of use on the cover. I quite like this one, a little bit, a little that bit abstract. Really cool. yeah. yeah. 
I like that kind of style of imagery. So I'm going to open it and actually, I'll drop it just straight into the document actually. Let's drop it here. And then. Mathias says, yes, the fonts are great. Oh, beautiful. Love it. Glad everyone likes my font choices. <laughs> It's, it's interesting as designers, everyone is just so different with their, their taste and what they like. Um, and I think, you know, everyone has their own style and I definitely have a, a bolder, stronger style, lots of color. Um, we're gonna, so from here, I'm just gonna open it into Photoshop. All right, so this is where we'll, I'll turn it into a gradient map. Um, and really get those fun um, colors. All right. So we're gonna go into gradient maps through here. I feel like this is a technique that some people don't often use or like don't know about that I think can really like just make a document or like imagery so epic. Um, so I'm gonna try with some blues actually. All right. So I think because of the, how the color is within the image, there's we really want to make it a bit stronger in terms of the difference between the, like the shadowing and the highlights. Mm -hmm. um, what I've actually also done is pulled in some uh, a few color palettes here. So I started out with like some really cool blues, your pinks and your orange, like a really tropical vibe, which I thought could be quite cool, or even some greens here. Um, so let's try with uh, with this blue. I'm going to literally take this code. I mean, if you didn't include pink, could you really call yourself Pink Pony Creative? Exactly. I mean, I'm wearing pink. I've got to be branded. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I do that's in regards to Pink Pony, I'm like, I have to be wearing pink. Yeah, no absolutely. doubt about it. I actually don't wear pink much on a day-to-day -day basis, but... What? Don't tell uh, anybody that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My secrets are exposed. <laughs> All right, so this is looking quite cool. I love the kind of harsh difference between the blues and the um, the highlights, the shadowing and the highlights there. I really like how that's coming together. So let's just give this a go. We could always try the peach and the orange soon, actually. Um, all right, so let's just save that as um, another gradient. This is the first time I'm labeling my, um, my files correctly. <laughs> Good. You know, as a designer, you do the whole like HKFG <laughs> yeah. and you're in a panic mode. <laughs> All right. So we'll it looks like a, a cat walked across your keyboard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So then we'll bring this into InDesign using, let's just open that right up. All righty. Let's see how that looks. Ooh. It's just starting to look quite cool quite funky. I'm gonna bring up the uh, image. So we're just nicely in the margins. And this is where I guess we can start having a bit of fun with it, um, figuring out the layout a bit more. All right. So I'm such a fan as a designer of like little bits of text, especially on um, layouts. I don't know what it is, but it just looks really cool adds like, it's almost like a graphic element rather than text. So here, let's even put this, um, these little babies right here in the corner. Um, we'll make him the same size as this, this volume one as well. Epic. Amy says, I worked in travel editorial design for four years and I'm so weirdly anxious watching this right now. Christy's doing an amazing, amazing job though. Oh, really? <laughs> that is so funny. But there's um, a lot of fun doing that for four years. Oh, definitely. Ooh. Okay, let's go. I'm actually going to bring this blue across as well. Um, I've, I'm very, like, as a designer, I'm, I go across all of the, like, Adobe InDesign and Photoshop so quickly and so um, all the time. Like, I'm always using the three um, mm -hmm. all together. I love to mix it all up. All right, maybe up here, let's do, um, leave your, we'll do this, but leave your heart out in Hawaii. 
Woohoo! There we go. And then we'll maybe let's uh, put another one across here just so we'll get a really nice balance between them all. All right, maybe we'll do the website here. I actually, I made up a, a logo and a fake logo and a fake name for the, the magazine company. Oh my <laughs> so, goodness, what is it? I know. Well, it's out to sea. No, it's, I've put here out to logo. Out to logo, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> clearly thinking about logos. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move into, I think we'll take this, this blue. Oh, there we go, it's there. All right, it is weird, I have to say, um, designing with a whole lot of people watching. I feel the pressure. <laughs> no pressure, it's all family here. <laughs> it's all family. We're all creatives. Everyone does their own, you know, different things, different styles. Exactly. Cool. Steve says that he's been to Hawaii twice. It's super Ooh. fun place. He's also a yeah. fellow Kiwi. <gasps> really? Yes. I wonder if he lives in New Zealand still, or if oh. he's like overseas. Um, I don't remember. I think I think he's in New York. Steve is oh, you know one him? of our regulars, and uh, we chat all the time about whiskey. He loves his alcohol. He's a connoisseur. Uh, oh, I love I mean, that. That's, that's so wrong. cool. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a great guy. Um, yep. I've also I've actually been to Hawaii twice, and I love it. Like I was thinking of what I could do today, and I was trying to decide between a editorial style brochure on like fashion or travel um and i decided to go with travel because i think i could make it quite a, quite a bit more sort of fun more my style um style of editorial uh so yeah i went with hawaii just because it was beautiful i loved it me and my husband there went there um a couple of years ago actually in like 2019 i think oh awesome yeah i want to make this uh, really big beautiful. steve's yelling at me he's in wellington <laughs> oh wellington he's in wellington oh, steve. sorry steve sorry steve we got it wrong <laughs> oh epic all right so i mean we're kind of coming together now you can sort of see um let's actually move this down i actually i want to bring in the margins a little bit more especially on this first page um oh, now nah, let's leave as is actually we're gonna leave as is and I like how big and bold that is. Yeah, I love like big typefaces that are just so like prominent on your page. Mm -hmm. They're definitely, maybe we'll drop this guy below. All right, because I think actually my little out to sea logo that I created quickly the other day, this is this little guy. Oh, cute. Yeah, so um, I just thought this would be quite a cool little add-on to place into the into the file to make it look a little bit more professional. Um did you make that with oh, your right. own uh, like pen or did you use a type? No, this was a typeface that I sort of just adjusted and um, adjusted to suit. All yes. right. As a designer, I don't know if many other people do this, but I copy vectors straight over into um, InDesign a lot. And I like to do it because then you can also adjust the color within InDesign. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that just to help me um figure out exactly the kind of colors i want to use and it's so much easier to, to change out all right so the cute little he looks pretty pretty cute there cool oh there we go well that's a nice that's a nice blue let's actually use this guy i wonder if there's a little bit of space in that top left corner where the mountains stop where maybe the logo stands out a little bit more yeah I wonder if we can even, oh, we can't bring that image down. I might even like make it a, let's make it a little bit bigger because I quite like it. Uh, actually, nah, I think I prefer it like that. There we go. Yeah, so it really stands out in that corner. Oh, we're kind of coming together now, just, you know, we're creating something, starting to look like a, a document. Absolutely. For things like the like heading page, cover pages, I don't often, you know, we've got our grid here, but this is when the grid kind of doesn't have to come into play as much. Um, you know, you're not working with a huge amount of type. Um, we could we could pull them there, but even then, like it looks too far across on the on the left. Um, I would love to pull them a bit closer, hug them on the side. 
I'm talking about my text and my graphics as though they're people. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's go into the fun stuff. So this is actually where I bring in a few of these elements. I want to start playing around with them, seeing what they look like on the page. Um, So once again, I'm going to start off with even like this little circle. Let's grab this circle. Take him across here. And you can actually, because of these, these keep their vector shape. So we can then actually keep them as editable vectors and change colors, which is really nice. Um, Make them a bit bigger. And kind of even just circle Hawaii there. Bring that out a little bit. Oh, we're looking pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Kind of a, a bit different to your standard uh, travel brochure. It was interesting though, because I think, um, you know, in this day and age with where technology is going, all this kind of stuff, which is kind of sad, isn't seen as much um, like really cool printed, um, you know, printed collateral for businesses. You know, everything's on apps or phones. Um Everything's online, so I wonder if the style of design is kind of, kind of you know, hopefully well, I feel, stay in. I feel like what we've seen is websites have become more editorial and like mm. follow a lot of the best practices now that you would do typically in InDesign or for printed material, So which is really cool. Like the grids and breaking grids, setting up your column structures correctly, all that kind yeah. of stuff is really interesting. Yeah, definitely. I quite like these little like kind of sketched edgy. I wonder if they'd look, let's have a go at bringing in like a different color here. I'll just try like a random orange or something. Could look kind of, oh, I feel like I like the blue. I agree, I I think, the blue. Yeah, yeah, keeping it all kind of that blue tone is really nice. Steve says he's also a keen InDesign user. It's an app that makes him money. <laughs> I love Photoshop and <laughs> Illustrator as well, but InDesign is the bomb. Oh, it really is. I love InDesign. Or do I, all my pre- presentations, um, all that kind of stuff um, in InDesign for sure. I used to have uh, some coworkers I used to work with used to build all their websites before Figma and everything was the thing in InDesign. Ah, yes. I think I did the same a few years ago, actually. Yeah. Um, and then I found Adobe XD and I never went back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice that Adobe XD is kind of taking that that places. Oh, definitely, for sure. Um, let's have the same blue. Steve has asked yeah. if you've tried the InDesign plugin M5. It lets you do multimedia designs of all kinds and then export to HTML5. No. I have, and I've never heard of it actually. <laughs> I need to get my get my stuff together and have a uh, look into that. Same, I've never heard of it either, either. Yeah. All right. I was just going to see what else we could pop in here. Um, maybe like a cool. Oh, let's even go this little guy. We could put him beside uh, the "I am free." Make him stand out a little bit. Pop him there. I love using these kind of um, vectors and graphics and things. Oh, I think they um, just really give it like a bit of personality. I like to call it. All right. I, agree. I like him kind of going off the page there. It's like he's got places to be. Yeah, he's got he's got to go. I've got to vacation he's, time. <laughs> exactly. That's the one. Maybe we'll get a couple of these cute little fish. I might bring them over here and just actually adjust them in like a, so they're all kind of just swimming by. Cute. All right. Growing up as a designer, I always, if any of my friends or my family were watching me work, they were always, couldn't believe how fast my hand was going with my mouse. (laughs) I'm definitely slowing, trying to slow down on purpose a little bit today. So I'm not too fast. <laughs> no, you're doing great. All right. Let's bring these little bubbles. Have a little bit of fun. These guys look like they're almost swimming with this person. 
having a bit of fun. All right, cool. It is hard as a, um, you know, if you're doing editorial stuff, I just love, especially this kind of blue would look so good as a RGB blue, it would just mm -hmm. really pop. Um, but obviously this is print, so the blue never comes out as strong. Um, definitely not as nice as your digital blue that you can get, make them a bit bigger. Voodoo Val has a question cool. for you. Oh, Christy, go for it. Do you have any organization tips for us that you never go without during your project? Oh, an organization tip. I've just started using um, Notion actually, which is a platform and I do all my project management through Notion and it's really, it really helped. Um, you know, even if a client has feedback, I throw it in Notion just so that if I'm not going to work on it that day, um, I'll know the feedback when I come back to it and another day structure of how I work. Um, it's tricky though, because I think, you know, I work on a lot of projects and at one time, um, cause I am, we know pink pony creative is quite sort of a agency style based, um, business. Um, so I'm always working with different clients, always got lots of different things on. So it can get quite, quite hectic sometimes. Um, but, and I think a big thing is just don't lose your cool. <laughs> Be, keep calm and collected. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's a good life mantra. Oh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Maybe we could add in one more little guy or something, one, even like a shell, even a cool shell. Let's put him in there. I'm excited yeah. to see where you'll tuck the uh, shark illustration later on. Oh, yeah. Definitely bring him in. Yeah. <laughs> the shark. Where is he? Oh, there he is. I even put the dun dun dun. <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> I love the little like cool. mantras and like words that you've also sketched in there. Yeah. Like I love this like really quick, you can't even almost read it kind of style, but you could use these in, you know, a, a bit of a different way. So I'll show you a bit of an example. Maybe we could get, um, let's go. I'll just get this Mahalo. I actually just want the, here we go. Let's grab him. Don't know if this is going to look amazing, but you know, if you were going to use this guy, um, you could even use him as a bit of a um, opacity or something. So we could bring him in. Let's actually make him white, and then you could even reduce him a bit. Oh, oh, we are working in an RGB. Oh, there we go. I think that's why I changed the opacity change there. Mm, there we go. So we are actually using RGB color. But you know what? Just for this instant, I'm going to keep it because it looks the RGB looks really good. Um, yeah. But as an example, you know, with that kind of thing, you could tint it or make an opacity to, um, you know, sink it into the background a bit. Um, oh, that almost made it gray, which is not what I wanted to do, but you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. And let's maybe bring in a couple of these little guys. Um and just a reminder, if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you come over to be.net slash Adobe Live so that we can see all your questions, comments, uh, yeah, participate in polls, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see what people think. I wonder, is anyone following along? They might, it might be too quick. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's probably trying to um, jump on, get the cool illustrations. All right, um, maybe let's get a couple more little dots. I see Neshi asking for the assets. Uh, so I think Val will probably pop that into chat real quick. Yep, there it is. Yeah. Just oh, in perfect. case you are wanting to, to follow along while we're jamming on this live. Definitely. Or even, you know, after the live, I'd love um, for everyone to have, to have a go with them or create other things with the assets, like with the cool little illustrations. Yeah. Even make what your would own. Be the best place for that? Tag you on Instagram? How would you yeah, want? tag me on Instagram. I'd love that. That'd be awesome. Um, even like on your stories or um, in in your posts. Let's go for a couple more. I don't want to overdo it, but. Dipgasm says following, but using your illustrations on their own project. Oh, Which, cool. I love that. Yeah. They mentioned earlier in chat that they were specifically looking for, I think, wave illustrations and you have oh, it yeah. in your kit. Yeah. So. Amazing. I like that. All right, cool. I 
think we're looking pretty good here. Oh, I keep wanting to save my work. <laughs> I think because I'm so used to doing it. Um, as you can see, I do switch between W and the preview and, um, you know, using the grids really quickly and quite a lot. And I think it's now just sort of something that I've gotten used to. Um, I can see that I'm using all my grids, things like that. Um, and, and for people who are not as experienced with InDesign, what does the W do for you? So just clicking the W, basically, we've got our preview here. So this is getting rid of all the grids. It's the fresh layout. Um, and then when you click W, that's when you can see your grids and your sort of text, box, text boxes come into play. Um, what is this preview actually called? Is it working? A working document? Oh, <laughs> maybe. That would explain the W. Wow. It actually would. Yeah, it's a hotkey W working. That could be it. <laughs> there you go, W. We'll take our royalty checks now. Oh, there we go. All right. You know, I feel like I'm pretty happy with where this is at at the moment. Um, yeah, that's great. It's looking quite cool. I think we'll keep the blue. I like the blue. I feel like it feels beachy. Let's pop them up onto that grid there. Um, yeah, let's keep them, keep them as is, and then we can kind of start to flesh out the other bits and pieces. So let's head on to the next, the following page. So here, this is actually where we see we're going to pull in the um, bit of a contents page. So I want, I'd love to do like a big image, maybe some text, um, bring in those cool um, the illustrations again. And I think on this one, I want to do like a really big bit of text. So let's go into our images, and I want to have like a big. Um, spread of a graphic so let's go views and we're going to have a look at these maybe some oh we don't want some lava i feel like that could be a bit dull <laughs> um some really cool images here um just so even beautiful. maybe yeah god i'd love to love to travel that'd be nice <laughs> <laughs> all right i actually did think maybe we'll bring in there were some snorkely ones snorkeling ones that could be quite cool. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. There's cool. the shark. <laughs> the shark is like snorkeling yeah. and then shark photos. Like, oh no, not, not getting in the water. Let's actually, we'll give this guy a go. So I'm going to pop him in here. Um, I'm just going to make him full spread. Um, and then I will go ahead and go into the file again and make a gradient map. I'll show a really cool trick as well. So let's go into Photoshop. So if I'm going to be using the gradient mix quite a lot through um, like a project or, you know, there's something that I'm going to do in Photoshop that I want to then apply to every image or most images, I'm going to make a action. So this is such a cool tool. Um, and I always forget how to, that it's there um and then so using it on a document like this can really really help um, and save so much time as well so if i'm gonna make a really cool gradient um this can be super helpful so if you go into your actions if it's not there just find it in under window and then we'll go um add an action and let's call this gradient map adobe live and then it's going to record. So now it's going to record every action I do um, within Photoshop, which is so helpful. So let's go into gradient map. Oh, that already looks quite cool already. I'm going to go ahead and find that blue that we've been working with. Um, just here, take this little guy, bring him over. Um, oh, yeah, I like that. I like how strong the contrast is. I think that'll look really good. Um, so you can even kind of adjust the blues in here, make them a little bit deeper. And then let's just go, okay. And is there a particular reason you choose to gradient map these images? Um, well, I think for like the intro of the book, I really wanted to have those funky, quite bold uh, imagery. So then for the rest of the book, you know, we might have a gradient map on, say, 
if we're working with a uh, this spread for snorkeling and we've got a bit more content because the page is going to be a little bit busier i might not um, add a gradient map to this page um, so we might have a gradient map image here we might not but for these intro um intro pages i thought it'd be really cool just to sharpen it up make it a little bit bit more edgy as well cool i didn't know if you were trying cool. to keep uh like ink printing costs down or things like that oh, as well. Like, no, it was definitely just for the look, just for the look and feel. Cool. That's great. Cool. So then from here, you can actually save, I'll have to save the um, the document, the image. I'm just going to save it as a random name. Let's go JPEG, save. And then from here, I'll exit it again. I won't save it this time because that's to the original image. And then if I go stop, then any image I open, um, I can actually turn into a gradient map so quickly. So I'll bring in this example. And then if I go to my uh, action, so the gradient map Adobe Live action, and then I press play, it should apply and actually save and close the documents. There it is. Bam. Oh. <laughs> yeah which is really nice, such a quick and easy way. Like it's amazing for resizing images if you're applying a filter or something or um, stuff like that. So it can be a really cool, easy way to save everything. So let's go back into our working document. All right. Yeah, where did we save this guy? He was under snorkeling, I think. Nope, maybe I didn't save him. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have to do it all over again. <laughs> I think because I actually, he might have saved as that other original one that I just did before. Uh, well, well, let's give it another go. At least we have go. an action script. At least we have an action script, but I think it's going to save as my, it'll keep saving as this, I think, which is not exactly oh. what I wanted. So instead, I'm going to go like this. So when I've got my, because I think I went too far, I'm going to actually just go gradient map. So I'll remove those ticks there. And then now when I save it, when I press play, it should just gradient map the image and not save it. Um, so now we can save it as a new image. <laughs> Smart. I like that. Yeah, there Good we go. Solve. Yeah. Easy solve. Done. So now we should have the image there to use. Um, I also noticed that you're, you are using uh, quality six out of whatever, 10, I think. Uh, so you're saving it like medium fidelity or a little bit above medium. Is that just yeah. to keep the files a little bit easier to play with right now? Yeah, definitely. Especially because um, these were free, like commercial images that I got online. Um, and they're always quite large files. And especially uh -huh. for something like this, if I'm just working, um, you know, playing with the, um, layout and things it can slow down the document quite a lot especially for you know in adobe live where we're doing Correct. something live using a camera um it, it can really take up the space so cool. that's why i'm just keeping them low um Makes all right sense. so we've got our cool image on the page now it's almost giving me um finding nemo vibes <laughs> <laughs> I love All right, let's... Nin, 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 nin. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I'll bring over this content again. So this is for the contents page now. So I'll do the same. Just bring in the text there. Let's take this guy as the header. So this is actually when we can start to bring in and play around with our grids as well, which will really help structure the document. Um, cool. So let's go heading. Whoa. I'll just adjust the, um, the spacing. So we'll go 70. Oh, no, it didn't obviously clip into it. There we go. I want to make this really big. Let's go hundred. All right. Now, what do we think of, um, you know, especially for like a different style of booklet. I kind of like the fact that the looking's on two different lines, but I'm not sure if it's a bit too edgy. And sometimes I think that the designer style can be a little bit too um, edgy for your average, average viewer. Um, let's go. 
I think I'm actually really keen to get this image quite a bit darker. Maybe we'll find another image that could work really nicely there, um, just so the text really stands out and really pops. Yeah, also if you have it darker, you could probably put that type in white and then it'd be hinting yeah. maybe at the idea of like, find what you're looking for in the water of Hawaii. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, no, I quite like that. Let's even just try and add a, um, oh, actually no, let's try another image. Um, I think there was a cool one back here that I saw that was a bit of the, this could actually work quite nicely because it's quite a dark, um, darker image. If we apply the gradient map over the top of that, it could come out quite nicely. So we can have the white text on top. Oh yeah, that's good. It could idea. look really cool. Um, let's open that in Photoshop. So now we've got our cool little um, action. Yeah, actually let's even dim it just a little bit. Yeah, I think that could work really nicely. Bit of Hawaii there. That's cool. Looking good. Save the image. Perfect. And then we'll go back into InDesign. And let's just open that up. You know, something I did only just realized in InDesign that I didn't know. <laughs> the whole eight or nine years I've been designing, you can just drag and drop images into... I didn't know that. And I just uh -huh. learned about it. <laughs> and I was like, what? This is yeah. crazy. <laughs> it's amazing how many things, no matter how long you've been designing in uh, the Adobe suite that you don't know about. So. Oh, uh, definitely. It can uh, take a long time to learn. Um, I'm thinking, you know, does anyone know <laughs> the, the whole of Adobe? You know, anyone know all of Photoshop? Probably I, not. I've been wanting to take an Adobe like certification test just to oh, see yeah. how I would do. Uh, but Is that I don't a think thing? I do very well. Yeah, you can get a certified in Adobe products. Oh, wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I'd do that that good too. Like I like to think my knowledge is pretty pretty extent and I think it is, but there's, uh, there's so much to know with Adobe. Um, yeah. Just Absolutely. always, always uh, learning new things. Let's actually just increase that a little bit more. That's what always gets me when I look at uh, people's resumes that have skill bars or like skill yeah. charts and it's like 10 out of 10 Adobe Photoshop. And I'm like, oh man, I've been using Photoshop for 15 <laughs> years and I don't think I'm 10 out of 10. Definitely. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean there. Um, I think it was an illustrator. I just, it, it was only about last year and I learned about the shape builder tool. And honestly, oh, yeah. that changed my life. And I was like, how have I not known about this? Well, it's a pretty what new feature at least. Oh, is so, it? I think so. <gasps> yeah. So I think you're that makes me feel better. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Not too bad. I'm even thinking we could um, actually just pull that right up to the edge, even on this side. I don't know. Just uh, some like really, I love big type. Just looks so good. Yeah. Um, cool. Vidu right. also is same. I want to get, I want to take a Photoshop certification. Oh, well, let's all do one together. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great Adobe stream. We just watch, it my, would. <laughs> watch my test face. That's how I'm yeah. trying to think. <laughs> the concentration will be um, full noise. All right, let's exactly. take <laughs> snorkeling. So this is when I'm going to like get into the contents um, side of things. So this is where we'll see, you know, page one will be snorkeling, turtle town, stuff like that. Um, cool. So let's add the character style subheading and she might be in that's in the black at the moment so we'll probably change it to a white could be looking quite cool um and then let's add in uh, these little points actually i have noticed i haven't made a um body text um what is that called character style <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my mind went blank for a second there let's go here do you typically Just prefer to build character styles or paragraph styles? Uh, <laughs> honestly, probably character styles. But I, is there a huge difference between them both? I'm probably going to get in trouble by saying I don't think so. I think they can <laughs> do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I probably actually should have used paragraph styles because paragraph styles is for your subheading, your heading, and your um your body paragraph but character styles is more like individual text um 
Maybe it lets you set the line height a little bit more. Yeah. Um, chat, if you know the answer to the question between <laughs> what are the differences between character styles and paragraph styles, let us let know. us know. That'd be if great. On, and if you're on YouTube, type in away. Make sure you come over to be.net slash Adobe Live and tell us there. <laughs> yeah, I reckon for this, this definitely, because it's a larger booklet to paragraph style probably would have been the uh, more suitable option. But here we are, you know, here we are. We're just designing away. <laughs> and I think as, um, as, as a designer, I think as I said this before, um, you know, just doing whatever works for you is so key because there's so many different ways to do everything. Um, let's do the next one, surfing. Let's actually just take this one, paste it in here, and then we're just going to make it a, um, a, a, it should be a, a, a paragraph style, but it is a character style. God, I can't find him now. Steve Here goes, is. there is a different. Par <laughs> paragraph styles are more most important, but both are. Okay. So. They're cool. Yeah. I think he's right. They are very important. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm actually just going to adjust these for the contents. Let's actually just make them the size of this. Cool. It could even kind of sit somewhere. I quite like it on this. We might even have to, maybe we'll, you could even pull that image across and make this blue or black. Um, maybe this is looking kind of cool. Uh, maybe it won't be so busy. I reckon I'm feeling this a bit more. I like that. I like the white space yeah. a lot. Yeah, I think I do too. The white space is good. Steve says All if you right. have a big document and want to make a change in the paragraph styles, it's easier to do. If you don't have them, then it's a pain to do. Oh, there you go. Chris says um, a paragraph style includes both character and paragraph formatting. So there you go. There you go. The people have spoken. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's go subheading and body as well. And obviously, I could I could actually make a um, let's make it let's make a paragraph style for my contents um, contents body. This is just for the contents body on this page. So let's go contents body. There we go. It seemed to. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, moving along to the next little bit. So I think this is actually working better. So I'm going to start to use my paragraph styles. So actually, I'm going to replace it with a. There we go. And then we're switching between both now, which is probably not the best way to do it. But <laughs> hey, you know, it's working for me. So we're going well. Cool. I love it. It's really showing what a hybrid character paragraph style model <laughs> could look like. Exactly. That's the one. Okay. All right. So we're starting to kind of come together to make this document looking, looking pretty cool. Uh, what do you guys think? How are we going here? Um, I think it's looking great. Okay, cool. And we'll just add in this last one too. I think that just that quick update that you did with the white space on that. That's definitely so, so nice. It's made a huge difference. We could even like bring this, I don't know how this is going to look. We can see right across to really fill the page. Well, yeah, that could look quite cool. Um, cool. Yeah. Do you know if you're having any trim lines? I actually don't have any trim lines on this document right now just for the purpose of the fact that we're, you know, just digital, but yeah, yeah. because this would go to print, you know, just so we're going to go to print, um, I'd definitely throw in your bleed there and say like three. Let's just Perfect. put them in there just so that you can have that um, trim line going nice and, and you're just extending everything out just cool. so we can print and there's no issues there. <laughs> All right, let's change this guy up. Um, so we're getting there now. This is, <laughs> I keep switching between them both. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, and you know, we can see here, we could potentially put these on two columns as well, I think, because they're quite, um, it's, it's uh, not super wordy, but we could actually extend these out to two columns and see what this looks like and even drop those. You know, that's oh, going to look quite cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, but actually, I'm just thinking, let's, let's actually, oh, that actually looks pretty good. I was going to say, we could even move them across to that column there, just so it's really nicely spaced out. But I actually like how this is looking because they're evenly spaced across there, even though we're not exactly on our grid. Um, I don't think anybody's going to notice. Nah, definitely Chat, not. don't tell anybody, okay? Yep, <laughs> secret <laughs> safe with us. <laughs> uh, Voodooville asks, what sorts of things would you say are imperative to keep in mind while working through this part of the process? Oh, I think um, just really thinking about spacing. Um, you know, you don't want to be going, say, if we put him here, he's going to look so crammed up. We want to give him some nice space around the, um, you know, around the text there, thinking about how it's looking on the overall page. Um, you could even think about pulling him up, you know, to keep in line with the text there. You know, grids are really important, but I also think it's important to make sure that um, it looks good when you take the grids away. That's key as well. So I think, you know, in this case, they're lining up, but I don't love how they're looking there. It doesn't look, um, it almost looks too, uh, would you say too balanced? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like quite the like the, yeah. It feels anchored even, in that corner now. Yeah, for sure. And no, it doesn't work there either. Um, but yeah, we're kind of heading somewhere here. Um, you know what I haven't put in is the, the page numbers. But you know, if we were going to put page numbers in here, they could just sit. We could add in a tab. Um, add in the tab here and then include uh, the page numbers following. Do you typically like to put page numbers on both pages or just one out of the two on a spread? Um, I actually just normally do the one, just the one in the, um, say, bottom right corner. Yeah. Um, did I select? There we go. I mean, obviously these aren't the actual page numbers, but you guys get the point. Um, and then you can kind of add them in, or maybe they'll just be sort of sitting here, add the big ones, that kind of thing. Um, and that could start to look really, really nice and tidy. You could even um, highlight the page numbers, you know, in a different color. It could be the blues. Could look really nice bringing the blues there and in here. I think as well, you know, really important to keep your hierarchy, keep your um, your body, your heading, your subheadings really clear. So I think using those different colors, the different fonts can can make that um, hierarchy look so clear and really good. I agree. Now, now we're on a different font. <laughs> All right, cool. We've added a little gap there. Now I reckon is the fun part where we can come in and bring in our little characters, our little guys. Ooh. Cool. Um, so we're kind of like, you know, getting somewhere. Yeah, it's looking great. I'm loving it. I like the contrast now. And I think that hierarchy helps with the uh, the blue in the, yeah. the header. Even though it's just slight, we could even, um, we could actually bring in a, I'm going to go this view. Our margin in here, you can actually change if you've got two columns by changing that margin. Just, um, oh, all right, bringing in, let's open up that gap there between the two, um, just to open up the gap between the numbers and the uh, next column. It'll look a bit tidier. That's great. Yeah. So Val's asked, if this was a client project, at what point would you have gone to them for feedback? And what does that process look like? Oh, this is a really good question, actually. So for me, especially if I'm working on a massive document, like a big brochure, or it could be um, a massive booklet that's like 100 pages long, say, I would definitely create a couple of spreads. So I would do, say, six spreads, um, make them, get them to a point where I'm really happy with them. And then I'd go across to the client and say, you know, here, this is what we've, we've done. This is what we're working on. What do you guys think? Um, is this direction you want to go in? Talk to them about it. We can have a Zoom call about it, um, make any changes. And then I guess from there, like I would keep adjusting just those six um, sp uh, spreads until the client's really happy. And then once they're happy, that's when I'd actually go ahead and say, you know, 
all right, now that we're happy, let's go ahead and make the rest of the document. Um, so it could be like 100 pages long, could be quite massive. Um, and just so that you're certain, because imagine doing like a 100 page document and then all of a sudden they come back and say, oh, I don't like it. Or yeah. it's not exactly what I'm after. You'd be like, oh, God, <laughs> not good. Yeah, I agree. Um, I know on your mm. website, you have like certain packages for like logos and brandings and things like that. Would you, do you typically do editorial stuff almost like bespoke or do you have a package for that as well? Um, I just do it bespoke. So it's all custom. Cause I think, especially with, um, you know, mo a lot of design is so different. Everything, everything you make is so, um, I guess changeable between projects and it changes up a lot. It's, you know, editorial could mean, Hey, I'm after a book clip for my business. That could be a booklet that's four pages long could be a little flyer. Um, and then someone else might come to you and say, hey, I've got a book that I want to create that's 200 pages long. Um, so it's all really different. I think it's important to custom quote everything and all your packages because of that. Um, all right, what are we working with here? So we've got the, um, the more landscape style photo. So I reckon let's go in, oh, should we try a little, maybe we'll try this little surfboard. Pop yeah, them in and see too. what we reckon. <laughs> it could even be just sort of sitting, sitting here or something. Oh, I don't love how he's sticking up a lot. No, um, I feel like he needs to be like grounded somehow. Yeah, he almost looks. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting uh, as a designer, you often like I often find myself having to create something that looks scattered and random and I feel like that is an art making something look random and like perfectly placed but it's scattered is quite a, a weird tough uh <laughs> design skill to have um, I agree I always look at certain people's work and I'm like wow that's so incredible like how did they know that that was the perfect way to balance that or yeah figure it out? Even, you know, making these at the um, on the front here, I wanted them to look a bit random and scattered, but positioning them in a way to make them look good and still scattered can be tough. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go back down. We're going to have a whole debate around nudging <laughs> a turtle over. Like two, oh, two for pixels. sure. <laughs> two pixels. <laughs> You're quite right there. I reckon like a cool leaf or something would look quite cool here. We'll do a little leaf. Um, we could get him. Yeah, he looks quite cool there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we could even bring them down there, kind of thing. Make him make them come out of the corner. Oh, so it almost feels like a pattern or, or thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're quite fun there. You know, it's interesting though because I'm making. I wanted to keep that really brighter blue, um, but where obviously you can see the difference between when the blue turns into a um, mm. CMYK blue rather than the RGB blue, um, it's quite a clear difference. Obviously, you know, if I'm going to print this. I want it all to be CMYK, um, but just for this aesthetic, I like the RGB blue. It's quite a fun, fun bright blue. Um, Let's actually bring in a couple of these little sketch marks. Quite like them too. Um, if you were creating something like this, would you uh, put your all your vectors and um, artwork as a P PNG? Would you save it sort of as a PNG from Illustrator and then push it across? No. Um, would you I've, do it this way as well? Yeah, absolutely. That control mm. you have over it is so much nicer. And I, I personally really don't like when I have to work with things that are rasterized because it yeah just becomes such a pain. Uh, it does definitely. And we could even use CC libraries here, but then you're not getting that editable, um, that editable vector that still, you know, can change colors um, and right. things, uh, which is, which is key here. Cause I'm, I'm kind of wanting to have fun with the colors and um, play around with those a little bit. So if I make that an opacity, yeah, then the image really changes um, just because of that CMYK and RGB issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish we could print really like neon colors. That'd be so nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> like a Rizzo print. 
Yeah, like I mean, you, you sort of can with pantons and things differently, but um, all right. Maybe we'll go with the, I'll go with the cool, um, maybe we'll bring in the Mahalo here. That could be kind of cool. So oh, that's like, nice. My Mahalo, my Kiwi accent isn't um, <sighs> butchering that, hopefully not. <laughs> Even play some kind of, interestingly on the page, I don't know if I love this one. We could pull him off, maybe have a little bit of a, could just be coming in from the corner there yeah even something like that's a bit bit better you see try to make it look random and scattered there the tricky one <laughs> cool i think it's looking great yeah we're kind of coming together here yeah um i like the little mahalo there that's that's quite nice um, maybe let's add in a couple of these little guys again just to bring in a bit more sort of that kind of dirtier um that sketch very sketched look i could have actually um drawn these pieces um that i've got here in straight into illustrator so using say like i've got my um my wacom tablet here i could use that and draw them directly into illustrator even you know with the pen tool and and draw something with a brush and you know adjusting the um the style that could give that same effect but um, I think, you know, when it comes to drawing something like these, you've got so much more control pen to paper um, rather than your iPad or your, your Wacom and things like that. So yeah, you can get the same effect. Sometimes it's just nice to leave your desk for a little bit. And if you can, you know, go outside and start sketching some ideas and come back later to the computer. Yeah, the exactly. Um, that's the one. I think um, I have you know, especially on social media, have become quite known for those, um, all my illustrative graphics, like even these here. Um, I would have done these, I've done these straight um, from my Wacom onto Illustrator rather than, um, you know, drawing them pen to paper. And then I've, you know, colored them in Illustrator, um, brought in the halftone there, the, the pattern effect, uh, just to give them like another element of interest give them like a vintage vibe um so that's another way you can do it and you made those illustrations yourself yes yeah i definitely Holy i make moly. all of these illustrations myself um so it can take some time and i think that's part of the reason now people love to come to me for branding um i not only do you know logo design and things i create these um you know this was another style where it's a little bit more structured um not not vintage style i'm just using like no uh there's no half tones or anything in these i'll see if i can find a couple of other examples um that's incredible but it's, yeah i love these patterns and they're very fun and i know they're not for everyone um but they can really create that full cohesive branded effect you know so um i'll show a really i cool love your example, little pizza actually. guy illustrations yeah yeah these are this was definitely and it still is actually one of my favorite projects i've ever done um a really cool those really cool illustrations in there again with the half tone quite a similar vibe to that the first ones um that i showed with the with the what's it called ice cream and things i was mm -hmm. uh, i was gonna show this project here so this is actually a friend of mine um and she's now used her illustrations on her shop that i created for her you know they're everywhere she brands her um you know her cookies she'll wrap them up in tissue paper that's the branded um so it's a really cool way to like bring out that cohesive branded effect using those illustrations i think it's that's really awesome. fun i love that it's a bougie bakery that's amazing i know it's so cute isn't it bougie bakery I like um, to tell her I mentioned it. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, Chris Olson says great patterns, and Charlotte says love them. How long does it take you to develop a full brand identity? So it can really it's it's so hard to say because I think sometimes I was just kind of try and bring up one um, like as an example when I created this project, I loved the end result here. But um, the first concept that I actually created for this, where this sort of branched from, looked quite different. You know, the colors were different. The logo was different. So sometimes I nail it on the first go and I get it right. And other times it's not quite there. So honestly, it can take up to like 
it could be a week of me sort of working on a concept it might even it could even be two days that I'm just bang out this concept it's like a gut feel that I spoke about earlier that I kind of just have um, and I can just smash it out and I'm like yep this is it I, I have nailed this or it could take me a little bit longer and um, it's a little bit more difficult but you know including that kind of pattern style I'm just trying to find more examples um, these are quite time consuming and can take a take a little bit of time so um, but but I love them they're great you know they're real bold this is actually quite interesting to show so these are all these patterns that I've created recently like this year I've done a lot of these um, you know if you follow me you've probably have seen these many times before and this was actually something I created when I was in university um, and I've always thought that illustration style that I have um, is quite off topic from what I originally started out doing but it's actually kind of always been in me you know creating things this kind of style um, and doing these illustrations I mean I've definitely improved <laughs> but um, yeah so that's great. kind of where that's come from all right so, so do you typically we're looking... do a, a fixed fee or like a for, hourly yeah, for, rate for brand identity stuff for brand identity stuff because i'm doing quite a few packages a lot and i get a lot of inquiries for my brand identity i actually have fixed price packages um so i send them out and you know they come with everything from your primary logo your secondary logo your brand marks color palette typography brand patterns it's like a really big quite a big document that people get um and a real full um a full lot like a lot of assets to work with on your brand which i think is really cool you know and using mm -hmm. those pattern illustrations um that i create for for brands they can then use you know the icons in a sticker or on their signs or um you know could be even on a shirt um to get that really cool effect so all right. I reckon this page is looking quite cool. I agree. I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do too much more to it. Um, I don't think you need to. I think it's awesome. Yeah. So I think we're starting off with the cover, which is really nice, and then moving into these pages. Cool. All we right. have about 30 minutes left. So if you are watching on YouTube, make sure you come over to be.net slash Adobe Live so we can answer your questions, hear your thoughts, all those good things. I know we have a really great questions happening in chat so don't miss out oh cool epic all right let's move on to the next page so for this spread this is when we're bringing in all the content um so we've got um we're going to start with snorkeling so this is three places that i'm recommending that people should go snorkeling um obviously there's so many on hawaii but um these were just the three that i picked for this for this project um so let's take a look at my um structure my wireframe structure that i originally bought out so i wanted to pull in you know the columns some body text some headings here and also the imagery as well so let's start when i'm designing things like this i kind of just start to throw everything on the page um you know so i might have let's start off with an image that i'm gonna have so we'll go into our snorkeling and I think let's go for that image that we were seeing before. So maybe this is where I might not necessarily use my gradients. We'll kind of see how it's going to work together. Um, so it could be maybe a big image on one side and then let's go and pull in the content. So this is snorkeling. We did quite a lot of snorkeling in Hawaii and I loved it. <laughs> it was very fun. Okay. Did you see any cool uh, uh, animals? We saw dolphins and a lot of turtles and a lot of fish. Oh. Sadly, I didn't see um, any whales or anything, but um, that would have been pretty amazing. I did actually go, um, which is relevant to snorkeling, I went and dived with great white sharks for my honeymoon this year. Oh. Um, obviously <laughs> in a cage. <laughs> um, so that's a bit of a fun fact about me. I've been diving with great white sharks. How was it? Were you nervous? No, not nervous at all. It was honestly so epic. If I, I highly recommend it to anyone. It was incredible. They are just like such beautiful creatures and they're very placid actually. And you, you're quite, it's quite surprising because I think the media makes them seem very aggressive and um, angry creatures, but they're honestly stunning. 
awesome. All right. Yeah. It was very cold though. So <laughs> that was the, the worst part about it. All right. So I'm basically here. I'm just going to pull across uh, my text. So I've got my heading that I'll probably adjust, my subheading, and then we'll bring in our other smaller headings here. So we've got Turtle Town. I'm not exactly sure how this bit's going to work. Um, but I'm just going to bring in all the editable sections and parts to this across. So maybe this will be, I'll go body, but maybe we'll make it like bold. I'll just leave that for now. It doesn't look that, that great. Um, but then let's go ahead. And I'm just actually going to fill it with placeholder text, which we love. So easy. Cool. And then let's just go regular and make that. So you can kind of see like the structures coming together. Obviously this isn't final, but you can kind of um, see it pulling together here. And this is when I'll start to really flesh out those grids, using the grids to align everything nicely. It's actually just started raining here. Hopefully you can't hear the rain. <laughs> can't. Um, Charlotte asked, do you ever have imposter syndrome while designing? Yes, for sure. Um, I don't know if it ever goes away. Do you think it goes away as a designer? I do. I definitely am a lot more confident with my work than I have ever been. Um, and I think that just comes with experience and working on lots of different projects and growth. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it would, you know, social media is amazing, but I think with social media comes comparison and you're always comparing your work or even comparing to how other people, um, you know, work on their businesses, um, so it can be hard to just really focus on your own stuff. Um, I but agree. I think, yeah, everyone has their kind of their own uh, personal style. And I think if you really zone in on that style, regardless of what it is, people will then come to you for that. Um, and, you know, and no one else, you don't want to be like anyone else. You want to be, you want to be different. I like to say um, pink pony. What do, what, do, what do I say? It's, um, you know, you want to be that pink pony in a world full of brown horses, be the pink pony. That's what it is. I was trying to work out what it was. So I was like, hmm. What a great tagline. I know. I thought. It's, it's like you've thought that, about this or something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> really thought about it. All right. Let's copy this. I actually think I've been. Cool. And then the last one, let's just change this. So we're starting to see the structure. You should just keep the heading there. Let's go like that. She maybe I'll call it Shark's Cove. Well, it says I'm totally a pink pony. Lol. Oh, yes. I love that. Got to be the pink pony in a, a world full of brown horses. That's for sure. Cool. I actually had, even though I've just got one staff member now, I had my Christmas staff dinner. And then we thought next year, we're going to go horse riding. That's a great idea. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, that would be fun. All right, cool. So you can kind of see the like structure coming together here, which is cool. Um, I'll obviously want to start to make things look a bit more uniform with the, with the rest of the booklet. Um, I was going to maybe bring in an image here, but like three images across here let's see how that'll look so i think it's really nice to keep keep that grid layout but adding some images we could even look at taking the heading across onto the other side um you know what i'm going to do this little trick where we drop in an image <laughs> um let's bring in oh there's some really fun little turtles here Oh, he's, he's big. Okay. I'm going to make him smaller. There we go. I can't believe I didn't know that for such a long time. But here I forget we are. what it is that, <laughs> what the command is to paste it into the frame at the correct size. I always forget that one. But Oh, yeah. Actually, I don't know that one either. Um, I know I Steve probably does. Steve, Steve, tell us. Steve, <laughs> let us know, Steve. Um, you know, we're starting to kind of come together here. Oh, let's just go random photo. Yeah, we'll bring the bounding boxes. I remember when I started using InDesign, these just confused me like no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
I was thinking, what is a bounding box and why do we need it? Because <laughs> it's confusing. Um, all right, I'm actually just going to change this image because it's not as, it's a bit dark. Yeah, there we go, something like that. All right, so we're kind of coming together here, you know, a structure, we're getting somewhere. It's quite, um, I wonder whether we need hmm, an image on the side or not. I, th I'm, you know, when, when I'm designing a document like that, I really like this, I really love to balance out um, the pages. So if we've got like a full page image on the left, on the next side, I'll have text on the left and then an image on the right um, to kind of switch between both, balance it out a little bit. Um, this is when I want to kind of start coming in and adjusting the body text. So it's actually sitting at like 12, but I'd love it to be a bit smaller. 10 point is definitely my go-to for body. So let's adjust the character style. Is it going to adjust? Actually, I'll make it a um, paragraph style. So this is when we can bring in the paragraph style again. <laughs> cool. Oh, he didn't change. Steve says, oh man, I don't know. I use the menu <laughs> thing. And the menu thing, you can use the choose object fitting and then content where it fit. Oh, there you Chris go. All right. I'm really um, messing this up, actually. I'm going to delete that style and start again. <laughs> Getting all flustered here. Oh, there we go. All right, now, now we're looking good. I'm just going to make another one, body. I like that. The line height on that is looking really nice. Yeah, definitely. And just that smaller font. Like I love, especially for body, I'll sit at, say, nine or ten points. Definitely not any any bigger than that. Um, now she asked, why don't we align justify all lines on paragraph? And <laughs> Ooh. Is it uh, silly for me to ask what does she mean by that? Uh, so when you do the justify all, it goes to the whole full width. So like the columns can look pretty even, right. but it yep. creates a bunch of rivers. And yeah, like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it can yeah. work sometimes, but you really kind of have to do it manually and it's a pain in the butt. Definitely. And to be honest, I don't love, love how text looks when it's sitting all, um, you know, um, using that kind of margin. I like it, that bit of spacing. Um, it's just a little bit easier on the eye, I think. It can really depend, you know, you get your newsprint and I think newsprints are very much um, all in that type of column. Um, yeah, just Steve says, things. and studies show that it's easier to read when it's ragged right. So. Yeah, there you go. That's the answer, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually just going to make these a little bit smaller too. I think these are a little bit too big. Let's go maybe to 12. Oh. Yeah, let's go 12. Make that a, a paragraph style. We'll go subheading here. Something's happening. Am I doing something wrong? <laughs> I think I adjusted that paragraph style, but now he's changing up. Oh, no. I know. Clearly, I don't use paragraph styles enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to try again. Oh, no. We'll go. You know what? They're not working for me today. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. Let's just do this quick and easy way. There we go. Nice. Boom. Perfect. Drop those down. So obviously this is when like the, you know, your layout is getting a little bit more complex and there's a little bit more going on. Um, I'm actually just going to delete that word. Um, so you want to try and make sure your hierarchy is really clear here. Uh, maybe we're going to go and hit and change the color on these ones. Um, you could even look at bringing the the title of these and the subheading above the images potentially. I do, definitely don't like that as much. So we'll go back. Um, mm. So just trying to get those and adjust these. And this is where like there's a lot of kind of fiddling going on, mm. and you just sort of keep working with it until you you're happy. Um, and at a good, at a good point. 
Actually, let's go ahead and pull these up here. And we'll just keep working with them. I'm not sure about this big image on the left, on the right, sorry. What would you do different? I don't know. We could even, I could look at um, maybe make, making this a gradient map, uh, potentially. So if we went into snorkeling, we did actually have it as gradient map here. Maybe that's where the gradient map could come in. Maybe if the images are all gradient maps um, to still bring in that same style. Uh, I like when they're, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, we could even look at making this text the blue. Um, just trying out, trying out a few different things. You've got to really play around with your layouts, your, you know, the font styles and things until you kind of feel like it's getting to a good point and you're quite happy with it. I'd love for it to sit under this guide here. There we go. Um, and see how that's kind of looking. Bring this down again. This is where all your clicking comes in with your mouse because you're moving it around so much. <laughs> cool. Um, we're well, sort of getting somewhere here. I might start to bring in some of those um, really cool graphics in here um, just so we can add a bit of something, something to the page. So we're snorkeling right now. So let's pick up these bad boys, um, drop them in. I like that. Yeah, he's he's a bit cute. We could even make it white, see what that looks like. I actually quite like the black, how the black looks. Mm -hmm. um, can even bring him along here. Now, see, it's interesting, like, when you bring in, like, just saying an image here, you're really throwing off that whole left alignment of the page, and it just doesn't flow as nicely. Um, I agree. So I think, you know. Maybe, that, some, maybe the snorkel goes to the right then, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, he could even kind of sit overlapping or something. Yeah, cute. Yeah, the little snorkel guy. <laughs> <laughs> he looks pretty fun. And then we could, I like these jellyfish, so let's pull them in. Um, <laughs> so I feel like you can have such a lot, like a really good time with graphics like this because you just play around with them and see what works best. You could even make him look like he's swimming with the fish. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> Um, Chris says, "Love this, love the page design here." So. Oh, cool! Tell him thank you, thank you for right, watching. Chris, I'll tell you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, we've got a, a little Nemo sign here. Not that there's any Nemos in this sea. I can't see any clownfish, but you know what? <laughs> we'll just pretend that he's Nemo for the day. <laughs> See, it's interesting, like, when I start to bring in him here, I don't love him there. I think he he doesn't look as good. Really? I, I kind of liked him. You liked him there? The little yeah. jelly? He's, he's looking the, cute. <laughs> he's looking cute. Yeah. Cool. I love the little, and like, then, illustrations mixed with the, the real photos. Like, I think it's super yeah, fun. Yeah, that's quite fun, definitely. So you could even, um, oh, look, there's one that says fishy, fishy. So let's put him <laughs> in there. And we could even, like... Um, put him down here, make him go kind of around that little fish. Yeah, it looks like he autographed that spread. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. He's autographing the page. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? We even have some bubbles. Oh, nice. Got bubbles. You can, you can even feed them some beverages. <laughs> some um, a cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Oh, I mean, stop. That's pretty cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> uh yeah, this is where you can really have fun with the style. I think it's really playful. Um, and then even incorporating this kind of stuff where you've got your lines, you could, let's say, bring in this circle, see where we could play with this. Um, we could even highlight marine life or something and make it the blue, pull it to the back. Just so. Ooh. We're probably still a bit, um, he almost needs to be like quite a lighter blue here. Maybe you put could, a tint on him. You could no. also be um, like, if you were to highlight or circle like the shark's cove and then throw an arrow, it could be like speaking specifically to the image on the right. Like yeah. if it was like an image from shark's cove. Oh, I see. Yeah, let's bring in an arrow actually. Um, let's try this one. 
this little arrow, bring him in, flip him around, and try give that a go. Oh, almost the arrow needs to be a bit more curved, eh? I'll, um, I think there's another one. There's a few more. Um, maybe this one. Give this one a go. I wonder how people are following along, if they're enjoying the journey. Oh, I think so. I think every, oh, how good. could you not love the journey? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's all about, um, what do they say? Yeah. I was going to quote um, Hannah Montana just then. <laughs> oh, okay. Please do. Life's a climb, but the view's great. <laughs> very, um, very inspirational for you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Hannah Montana. You're midweek. <laughs> hey, no worries. <laughs> All right. We're looking pretty cool. I feel like, you know, we're getting somewhere here. Um, you could even look at making these these three tiles a gradient uh, like a gradient map they could look kind of cool um maybe i'll bring in a little um, underlining here so we're kind of just playing around with the style and introducing these these little uh highlights yeah that's quite cute turtle town it's it is a tricky thing though um you know because i do quite bold out there stuff sometimes there's there is a fine line between overdoing it as well mm. um but the art is in the eye of the beholder as they say um cool we're looking pretty good i'm curious to know if there's anyone watching that hasn't um who's come from like my instagram or my tiktok um has anyone come from there <laughs> yeah let us know chat let us interested know to know definitely if this is your first time with hanging out with christy or your millionth time please let us know yeah the millionth time i'm actually gonna move him <laughs> i didn't like him there because he created that space like too much of a space between the heading there and the subheading. I almost like it when it's a bit tighter there. Yeah. And uh, for things like this, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say for things like this, I'd, I'd love for this to be one line, you know, especially because we've got one line along here. Absolutely. Um, maybe we could just change it up. Um, swim with the turtles. <laughs> I'm just going to change it up for this document. Um, and then we can, you know, bring in these guys a bit tighter. And it looks so much more balanced having all everything on one line. Um, Val says, my first time seeing Christy, but I think there was someone earlier that came from Instagram. Stephanie says, me. Amy says, oh, yep, yay. came over from Insta. Neshi says, uh, I'm from Instagram. My handle is art Graphics. She might recognize me. And then Agostino oh, yeah. says, I came from Instagram. So welcome, everybody. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. I love Emma that. Emma says, me too. Love your work. So inspiring. That's huge. Oh, amazing. I did um, try and advertise it a bit and say to everyone, come and support me. <laughs> yeah. so says, people... I was coincidentally on her Instagram yesterday. Didn't know she would be here today. Oh, look at that. The community is growing. Amazing. Holy moly, everybody's from Instagram. Charlotte's here. Oh, really? That's crazy. <laughs> because I, I have uh, posted it a few times. I was a bit excited. So, you know, I've got to post it. It's <laughs> great. Um, Augustina says, of... crazy to think that we're on the opposite sides of the planet. I'm from Argentina. Welcome. Oh, definitely welcome. And then I'm living in the future, which is the other crazy side of it. Um, us New Zealanders down here, we're in... It's Thursday. <laughs> cool. Um, maybe we'll bring in just one of these little, I love the scratchy one because he's a bit like, um, he's not super dark. And then we kind of, I reckon we're looking pretty good here. Even put a little scratchy on the fish. <laughs> just to add a little bit of texture. Um, so we're looking quite quite fun here. Can even look at making this a bit um, bit bigger. Maybe going on to that, really hitting that column there. Um, let's give that a go. See what that looks like. All right, I'll try him up there a little bit further. 
give him a bit of, a bit of breathing room. We have about else? 10 minutes left. So if anybody has any questions, make sure that you're throwing them in chat now so we can answer them over the next 10 minutes. Definitely. Hit me with your questions. I'm happy, happy to answer. <laughs> um, cool. You know, maybe like a, another, I don't know about another color within the booklet yet. Um, I think we'll stick with the blue. I'm quite happy with the blue. I actually love this big white bit of text. So maybe I was going to say we could try. It's all about trial and error, especially with, um, you know, any kind of design. You've just got to give things a go, see what they look like. Um, you could even get quite creative here. This might make the page look quite unbalanced because where you know i don't know maybe you would go this could look a bit too much yeah but a bit crazy but you know if we had this page on the left side that could be a really nice introduction to you know dive with deep into snorkeling on the left with the big image and then if we had all the text on the other side um that's when you'd remove this heading and have it you know you could have it big here or something that could look really cool i agree um yeah but it's starting to come together, I reckon. We're looking pretty cool. Yeah, it's looking awesome. Maybe we'll do... I, I should have drawn a seagull. A seagull would have been perfect. You know what I do have? Clouds. Oh, perfect. clouds. <laughs> we could throw some uh, clouds in there. Maybe just uh, one or two. Frederick asks, how often do you look for stock images? Oh, it really depends. If I'm working on a project... Um, especially with branding, you know, a lot of businesses I work with are small businesses, so they don't, a lot of them haven't done photography, you know, they're waiting for their branding to do all the photography. If they're making a package design, they want to print it out and then do the photography. So a lot of them don't come to me with photographs. So I do tend to just look for them when I need them, which is probably weekly, to be honest. Um, and I just, I really look for them on Adobe stock um, would definitely be my main source of images. And then a lot of um, really cool websites like Pixels and um, Unsplash, which are commercial free um, sites for images, which are amazing as well. Um, those are always great. That's great. But and don't guess someone else. If I can't draw, may you suggest some resources where I can find some illustration packs? Well, you could definitely look on um, places. I think, you know, a lot of the stock websites have that you can purchase have, you know, vector style graphics, which you could definitely purchase. Um, but I think with drawing as well, don't be afraid to go pen and paper. You know, like if you look at these images, they're not like the best drawings in the world, but then you can make them look really cool by making them a bit sketchy or like, you know, uploading them into Illustrator like here and then you could actually go ahead and make any adjustments you want to say we wanted the stalk a bit fatter we could get in there and make him a bit bigger um so it's really thinking about drawing as and creating these graphics as that's just like the first structure um you know often if i'm going to then draw a say if i'm going to draw a fish let's just draw a really quick fish <laughs> from here you know this isn't the best this is not my final uh fish that i want to present to anyone but now i can go in and actually make the adjustments to make it perfect um so i think that's so important to remember is just you're going to be able to adjust it, it doesn't need to look 10 out of 10 on your first go you can use tools to then um smooth things out um make it that perfect graphic that you want it to to be um that's really yeah, helpful no, I think, feedback. Yeah, I think we're sort of starting to look good here. Um, and I think you also drastically undersold your sketches. So. Oh, do you think? <laughs> yeah, Thanks. I think they're so cute. They're so fun. <laughs> Thanks, and, guys. <laughs> yeah, they're really nice. Oh, cool. You know, they're uh, a bit of fun. Cool. I really like this page, actually. I think this page is really nice. Um, I think because of the big white space, it works so nicely here. Mm -hmm. Um. And then here, obviously, it's starting to get a little bit, like, if anything, I might even drop him, could even drop them just to, like, clean it up a little bit, give it a bit of space. Um, but we're starting to look quite cool. So you could even, um, we don't have any too, more, too many more sketch sketches there. Uh, 
yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Yeah, it's looking for that page. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And once again, like if I was going to, should we just, I'm going to give it a trial. Let's go into, got a few couple of minutes left, I think. So let's pretend yeah. we're going to make a gradient map on this. Throw that action on there. Let's give him a save. So he looks quite cool as gradient map. Let's just save him as a JPEG. And then we can actually go ahead and upload him in to uh, Turtle Town. There he is. And he's a gradient map in like a couple of seconds. So, so yeah. Oh, mm. <laughs> yeah, so fast, especially with the action tool. It makes it so much quicker. Um, so you could even go ahead and try and do it with these two. What do you think? Do you guys think the gradient I like the maps? original color more, I think. Yeah. Or, or like I think everything can't be gradient mapped. So it's either these three get gradient mapped and then the image on the right mm. gets ungradient mapped. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Yeah, let's keep those those bad boys just like that. Yeah. And Chris asks, uh, how do you decide what color to use with vector sketches on the page? Black, white, blue, et cetera. Um, for these ones here? I believe so. Yeah, it's tricky. I think um, just once again, play around with it, see what works. You could try blue here. Actually, that one does look quite good in blue. Um, and then we've got the black ones there. You could even try them in white. But, um, you know, there's so much trial and error. See, I like those ones in white, but obviously these get lost. Um, so much trial and error within any kind of design you do, um, just seeing what works. Um, that's, yeah, see, I can, that's looking really cool. Uh, Dope was asking earlier, um, do you go about pitching to clients or are you typically, they come to you? And how do you go the about clients pitching if you do? Yeah, I've been really lucky actually with um, with Instagram and TikTok. I haven't touch wood had to pitch to any clients. Um, everyone comes to me, um, and from there we just kind of go through a bit of a process as to if we're going to be a good fit to working together, how we're going to work together, and then um, yeah, if we if I think it's a good fit, then we'll move ahead and. Um, yeah, but all through Instagram and TikTok, really, like social media is amazing. I didn't realize as a designer that there was this world of design and creatives on social media because um, I only got onto social media for my design work probably a year and a half or two years ago um, and I'd been in the industry working for other people for about seven years um, so it took me a while to figure all that out but it's a really cool supportive positive community which I love it's it's very it's awesome that's great. Let's yeah. start laying out what are we going to be working on tomorrow? Because I know we have a wrap up in a couple of minutes. Yeah, sure. So tomorrow we're basically going to go through and just create really cool, a few more uh, interesting layouts. I want to play around with like bigger typefaces, even like I said before, spreading it across like, you know, a page and making it vertical, things like that. And just having a bit of fun with the different style of layouts we can play with. So um, and just continuing through the booklet. But yeah, hopefully um, you guys follow along tomorrow as well. I'd love to see everyone back and enjoying it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited for tomorrow. I think today looks incredible. If you don't mind just quickly running us through the, the, the spreads sure. that we've got so far. So back at the first page, I love the, this um, how this has all come out. Loving the fonts that we kind of, I chose compared to the other ones. I think they just work really nicely with the, illustrated style graphics there as well um, and including those really fun illustrations and then we can go ahead and see the bit of a contents page um, obviously really balanced with your large full gradient there and then your bit of text and white space here um, and then moving on to the first page of like the bigger thicker content style where we've got you know our text where we've got a little blurb about exactly what everything is um, but yeah, no, it's looking pretty cool. I'm actually happy with where it's coming, where it, where it is. Um, it's looking awesome. But I if anyone would want to see anything tomorrow, definitely let us know before we before we leave and end the live. That would be yeah, awesome. Absolutely. So where can people find you? Give us a shout out. Where do you want them to go? 
So you guys can find me anywhere on TikTok, Instagram, my website, Behance, um, just Pink Pony Creative. Um, so it's pink like the color and pony like the horse. Um, and yeah, just find me, follow along. Um, I've, yeah, I'm really active on Instagram and TikTok as well. It's also been another really big platform for me. So um, would love to have you there. And if you guys use my graphics, I would love to see them everywhere and um, post, tag me in it. I'd love to see the stuff you guys create. So Perfect. yeah. Well, thank you everyone for hanging out with us today. We will be back tomorrow. Make sure you come back for that and stick around today for the Premier Pro Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, we'll see you all very, very shortly. Looking forward to it. Amazing. Thanks, Bye, guys. Everyone. Bye.